Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. This is Anushka Vora. In this video, I'll be talking about Gottschalk the signal mechanism in India and steps that could be taken for its effect. So, what is the signal mechanism? Is known to all of us. The signal is the act of reporting suspicious activity. The signal is something which is present everywhere, even in a company, public sector. Establishment, factory, the signaling can be done anywhere. Signaling acts as a deterrent. The presence of effective whistleblowing mechanism would ensure that the person does not engage in fraudulent activity. There's a report of association of certified fraud examiners in 2022. We conducted a global survey. The report shows that almost half, that is almost 49%, that is half of the frauds would received through tips, and more than half of these tips were received from the employees. I'll just share, I'll just put my baby on screen. So this is the report, this is the survey that they conducted. So as such, so this could doing also acts as a very effective, cost effective fraud detecting mechanism. Well, let's see the current mechanism, which uh, is in India with respect to the sibling. So the companies are 2013, all listed companies and certain classes of companies that meet the threshold limit, which provide under rule seven need to have an effective vigil mechanism. As the, as the companies that are covered, these companies are generally perceived to involve public interest. When we talk about listing regulations, under the listing regulations, all listed companies need to have a whistleblower or a vigil mechanism policy. It reads as Every listed entity is required to devise an effective whistleblower or vigil mechanism policy enabling stakeholders, including individual employees and their representatives, for it to freely communicate their concerns by illegal and unethical practices. Now, here we are emphasizing the effective whistleblower or vigil mechanism policy and freely communicate. So, with the term effective, we understand that this should not merely be a tick box approach. When we talk about freely communicate, we understand that protection has to be accorded to the person who blows the whistle. Now, both under the Companies Act and listing regulations, there is provision with respect to protection being given to the person who blows the whistle. So, both these statutes, Companies Act and listing regulations, so we have understood that, okay, we need to have a vision mechanism and that we need to, some, uh, all the listed companies need to have a policy. Now, that's fine. The letter has been prescribed, but like, who is, who is responsible for doing that? What is the, the letter has been laid down, but has, has it been followed in spirit? So both the statutes, they cast the responsibility on the audit committee. As per companies act, the audit committee needs to oversee the vision mechanism. And when we talk about listing regulations, the terms of reference of the audit committee provides for reviewing the effectiveness of whistleblowing or the vision mechanism. So, is that being done? So, practically speaking, that is done. We as secretarial auditors, we see the minutes of the companies, we, we see the minutes of the audit committee. We come across the agenda where they, you know, agenda with respect to reviewing the effectiveness of vigil mechanism or whistleblower. And you know, that, that's there in the minutes. It's, it is very nicely written down in the minutes that there's the audit committee reviewed the effectiveness, they were, the, the audit committee, you know, uh, took note that no complaints were received during the quarter and that the vigil mechanism is working properly, the function is working properly. Now, my question is, saying that no complaints have been received, is it certification that the function is working properly? Can that be the case? There could be instances where People are not even aware that they have such a power. They're not even aware that there's a policy in place and that they could, they could report um, what's going to that policy. So, merely just writing Nahoon or merely just conveying that, okay, uh, no complaints were received, would not be a certification for the function being working currently. We'll just, uh, in a few minutes, we'll talk about the steps that could be taken for effectiveness. So before that, let me talk about um, the disclosure requirements and the process of vigil mechanism. So both under the Companies Act and listing regulations, they provide for disclosure with respect to vigil mechanism. 
under the both support and the uh, corporate governance support and the listing regulations that AMEs have to provide the fact for establishment of virtual mechanism along with an affirmation that uh, no personnel was denied access to the oil company. Now, under insider trading regulations, also there is concept of informant, where, where uh, the regulations provide that the vigil mechanism policy of the company should provide for instances of leak of UPS. There is the Whistleblower Protection Act of 2014, which is applicable in public sector organizations. We'll be here talking only about the corporate whistleblowing. Moving on, let us see how an ideal process should work. So now a person has made a complaint. That person could be employee, vendor, supplier, customer. So that person has made a complaint that could be through email, telephone, letter, or whichever method that is provided in the policy. Now that complaint reaches to be the to be receiving it. Now at the receiving end, they could be one person, they could be more than one person. I would suggest that there should be more than one person. Like here, there's chairman of the board, there's a committee, there's a chart. If the complaint is with respect to you know, financial fraud, then that could be reported to the chairman of the board or to the committee members. This committee would be either an audit committee or some delegated body of the audit committee. If, if uh, the complaint is with respect to non-financial aspects, that could be reported to the HR. So say if the complaint is against the chairman of the board or the member of the committee, then it could be reported to the HR. So, you know, this is the importance of having an alternate mechanism. Because otherwise, not having an alternate mechanism, some complaints might not even be to the system. Once the complaint is received, the next step is investigation. So once the receiving end receives the complaints, they forward it for investigation. Now here, they could be an external agency, you know, for investigating the case. So the investigation agency they will carry out a fact-finding exercise. The accused will be informed, the opportunity of being will be given. And if it is, if the allegation is proved, then disciplinary action will be taken. That could be termination or demotion, depending upon the gravity of the matter. Then protection has to be given to the whistleblower. Now, so, uh, while you know. During the entire process, confidentiality is very important with respect to the whistleblower. The name is not disclosed and protection is to be given to the whistleblower. So this entire process, this should not be a prolonged process. This should be a time-bound mechanism. When the complaint reaches the investigating authority, till the time the investigating authority completes its, completes its investigation, it should be it should be a certain time period, which could be say 45 to 60 days. Then there is another uh, important concept of anonymous complaints. Say I'm an employee of XYZ Limited and uh, I'm aware of some fraud in my department, but I but I am reluctant to report. Maybe because I'm uh, this the fear of retaliation or that the person at the, the receiving end is the person against whom I want to complain. So I would I would want to not disclose my name and also complain. So, so, so that there has to be a concept of anonymous complaint. We, we went through um, the vigilant mechanism policy of top 10 companies and found out, found out that almost, almost half of the uh, companies, they, they actually have a time-bound mechanism. They provide for a time-bound investigation process. And more than half of the companies, they have provision for anonymous complaint. Now let us talk about the uh, last part, which is steps that could be taken for the effectiveness. Now the entire system is in place. The person who's responsible, the authority has also been laid down. Now is that being followed in spirit or what could be the, you know, uh, probably, you uh, what could be the steps that could be taken to ensure its effectiveness? Now, like, very uh, the, the most important thing, the most important thing is awareness. If people are not educated about their rights, they're not made aware of their rights, then nobody can take an action. Right? So sensitization and training programs is very important. It should be the responsibility of the board to sensitize their employees that there is such a policy, you have such a power that you could report any fraudulent or suspicious activity that you notice. 
you can also contribute to good governance so there should be emphasis on sensitization and training programs in every organization as a main person joins the company there is an induction program orientation program so this should also be a part of that induction then uh, is that the, the employees and one also important like one more thing here to note is that there should be awareness among the employees to not to not take undue advantage of this part we they have that part that where they could contribute to good governance they could they could report any fraudulent activity they should also not misuse this part then in third having a second point would be having a dedicated committee for that like as i mentioned that there could be an audit committee or some dedicated committee there should be separate independent committee for those whose role should be defined and that should be documented as a part of the policy transparent process of investigation now the entire process of investigation as i as i had mentioned that it should be a time bound mechanism to so be so it should be clearly documented in the policy that that uh, there should be the time period for the investigation and the companies can engage externally justice next point would be having an alternate mechanism we have uh, you know we just discussed on the importance of having alternate mechanism because some companies in the lack in the absence of alternate mechanism some companies might not even reach the system next would be checking the entire process uh, checking the reviewing the entire mechanism now the policy is a they may they provide for telephone number email id do we even know that email id is a working are we even aware are, are those email ids only open the once in a quarter to to you know give the report to the audit committee that there is no complaint to receive this is the entire process are the email id is working has to be checked is it logged in throughout the year to check what all complaints are received the, the, the emails are not getting marked as spam that is very important to check we as auditors we during the this is also task for audit we do send an email to the email id which is provided in the policy and we ask them to revert so we, we send a test mail as a part of part of our audit and you know once we get a revert from it we we are you know satisfied that at least the email id is okay but then again this is not a certification that the entire process is uh, very efficient next would be disclosure and both report so like the statute they already provide for some disclosure and both report along with that we have uh, annual report on csr we could have a similar report where you no know, the directors the board has to you know provide for the training programs the sensitization programs that were conducted during the year how many the number of programs that were conducted so these could be the uh, you know uh, yeah, of course this is This is not exhaustive. There are more steps and more actions that could be taken beyond this. But yeah, these are the important steps that could be taken for effectiveness. The last, like we have seen the mechanism which is in India, and similarly we find it globally also. And uh, this was you know long back. It came later in uh, Indian Indian companies that. Sabin Road Clay Act of 2002 also provides federal law. It also provides for uh, to growing and provides for punishment to the person to against the person who takes any action against the whistleblower. Singapore Code of Corporate Governance it casts the responsibility on the audit committee to publicly disclose and communicate the existence of whistleblowing policy. The similar similar provision is in China also. They also provide for setting up a whistleblowing hotline. so that was it about the global mechanism that is the current mechanism and steps that could be taken to ensure the safety thank you so much for listening to the video